The topic of this video is building quadratic models from verbal descriptions, economic models. Let's look at a problem. The price P and the quantity X sold of a certain product obey the demand equation X equals negative 8P plus 176 with 0 is less than or equal to P is less than or equal to 30. Part A, express the revenue R as a function of X. Part B, what is the implied domain of R? Okay, to begin this problem, the first thing we have to understand is that there are actually two equations, the one they gave us and the one that we are expected to just know, that revenue is equal to quantity sold times price. Both equations are important, so we'll write both equations for this problem. X equals negative 8P plus 176 r equals x times p. Okay, let's look at part a. Part a says to express the revenue r as a function of x. What that means is that we want one equation where the variables in it are r and x. So, which one of these equations is the closest? Well, it would have to be this one. This is the only equation that has both variables in it. There's just one problem. It also has p in it. We need to find a way to remove the variable p from this equation. And the way we do that is using the other equation, solving it for p, and then making a substitution. So let's begin. First thing we're going to do is we're going to swap a couple of terms. We're going to pick this term up and move it to this side. And we're going to pick this term up and move it to this side. And we'll remind ourselves that when a term changes sides, it changes signs. So positive 8p on the left equals negative x plus 176 on the right. Dividing both sides by 8, and remembering that the coefficient of this x is actually negative 1, gives us the following statement. p equals negative 1 8 x plus 176 divided by 8, which happens to be 22. Now that we know what p is equal, we can plug this into our other equation. So we get r is equal to x times p. But instead of writing p, we'll write negative 1 8 x plus 22. Distributing the x to both of these terms, we're going to have r equals negative 1 8 x squared plus 22 x. And because these, the part a of this problem says that we should express r as a function of x, Instead of writing just r equals, we're going to write r of x equals. This is the answer to part a of this problem. Okay, we're now ready to move on to part b. What is the implied domain of r? Notice that it doesn't say what is the domain of r. It says what is the implied domain of r. What that means is if we just follow the four steps for finding domain that we learned in another video, it's going to give us a wrong answer. The word implied means there's something more that we need to think about. So. Let's go through the four steps and get our wrong answer, and then think about the word implied. The four steps for finding domain say, start with all real numbers, even radicands greater than or equal to zero, log arguments greater than zero, denominators not allowed to be zero. Well, this problem has no even index radicals and no logarithms, and the only denominator is an eight, which is not zero, and therefore, based on the equation only, we would conclude that the domain is all real numbers. However, domain is a, is a collection of all the possible values of x, and in this problem, x represents the quantity of items sold. So, for example, can you sell negative 3 items? No. Can you sell 0 items? Yes. Can you sell 800 items? Yes. So what that tells me is that x cannot be negative, but it can be 0 or positive. And based on that idea, my domain is probably going to go from zero up until some value. Now, it's actually not going to be infinity. And the reason why is because it is not possible to sell an infinite number of items. So the next thing we have to do to get the answer to the implied domain is figure out how many items do we have. The most you can sell of a particular collection of items would be all of them. So how many do we have? Well, in this problem, the amount that we have is actually shown right here, 176. How do I know that that represents the number that I have? Well, this is a demand equation, and the demand equation tells you exactly how many will be sold based on the price. If you want to guarantee that all of the items that you have leave your store, what price should you charge for them? 
zero, free. Put a big sign on it that says free, and by the end of the day, they'll all be gone. So watch what happens when you replace P with free. Free means zero. So X is equal to negative eight times zero plus 176. This is just zero plus 176. And so we get X equals 176. This tells you how many items will be sold when the price is free. In other words, this is how many items we have. So that allows us to fill in the remaining part of our domain, which for this problem is bracket zero comma 176 bracket. Okay, we've now completed parts A and B of this problem. In another video, we'll do parts C, D, E, and F.